Three volunteers in Malaysia deliver emergency cash to fire affected residents. We examine Elga Reeves in Taoyuan from the perspective of a filmmaker. Welcome to Dye Headlines, I'm Sibi Shu, thank you for joining us. In Malaysia, a fire broke out in Kedah, destroying 10 houses and displacing 9 households. Upon learning of the news, city volunteers immediately went there to provide care and emergency cash. I've only taken my ID and mobile phone. I was not able to save the other items because the fire was too big. I did not have time to save my belongings. With the burnt smell in the air, this house was burned so badly that only pillars were left. The fire broke out in Kida. Unfortunately, no one was injured. The fire truck could not enter as the alley is very narrow. The house are crowded together with the big wind putting out the fire took time. Two houses belong to Indians, two houses belong to Chinese, and six houses belong to Malaysians. Upon learning about a fire disaster, people from all walks of life reached out to affected residents. When we came here, many organizations have already given them food, rice, and cookies. We Tsuji volunteers came to provide care and emergency cash so they can buy what they need. Thank you for helping us with financial aid and others. Thank you very much. I'm deeply touched to see Zigi volunteers help these affected residents regardless of their ethnicities or religious beliefs. Although the affected residents faced the challenge of rebuilding their lives, city volunteers will accompany them along the way. In January this year, heavy rain led to floods in Kota Tinggi, Malaysia. Therefore, 20 city volunteers carry out disaster relief operation. In the rain, city volunteers are visiting every household to compile a disaster list. There were severe floods in many areas of Kota Tinggi in Malaysia, and the yellow turbid water has not completely subsided yet. Tuzi has distributed consolation cash to 266 families to satisfy their urgent needs. I don't know how to express my feelings. Anyway, thank you very much for your help. The refrigerator and the washing machine are damaged. So is the sofa. You see the refrigerator fell down, but no one helped me. I can't lift it by myself. My family lost the cabinet and all the furniture. Now I can only rely on the freezer given by someone yesterday. I have to tidy up and move things and then clean the floor again. I have to bear the fact that my feet and hands will get soaked again because it will take another three or four days to clean up. By distributing consolation cash, Suzy's blessing are being sent to each affected household. In the aftermath of hurricanes in Mozambique, city volunteers have provided hot food to the affected residents at their shelter for more than 20 days. They've also distributed aid supplies. At the distribution, a pregnant woman has caught a volunteer's attention. After the distribution was completed, volunteers went to the hospital to visit her. She has given birth to a baby boy. She named the baby Mariano Tsuji Jose to express her gratitude for Tsuji's assistance. <laughs> At the shelter square, supplies for the affected residents are placed neatly. As the distribution is about to begin, this pregnant woman has a request for the volunteers. She told us that she is about to deliver her baby and cannot wait for our distribution to begin. Therefore, she wants to receive the supplies first. Then, we discussed this and agreed for her to receive the supplies. After that, she went to the nearby clinic, but we volunteers still worry for her. <coughs> Worried about a pregnant woman, after the distribution, volunteers went to visit her at a nearby hospital. They found out she has delivered her baby. This infant is her second child. This is Mariano, who was just born. I'm very touched to see the baby being delivered safely. 
This is Chizzi's strength. His mother said that his name is Mariano Chizzi. Later, volunteers accompanied the mother and son home. Seeing their less than ideal home conditions, volunteers helped clean up the place and deliver Jin's folding bed, blankets, and baby supplies. As the story spreads in the community, a hotel owner has offered work opportunity for the mother. So the volunteers also promised to continue caring for this family. In the United Kingdom, a lockdown has been issued since January. Schools are closed and children need Chromebooks to learn from home. At an elementary school, many students' families are struggling financially. Therefore, volunteers donated 15 Chromebooks so that the children can continue their education during the pandemic. Starting from January 3rd, the government ordered a nationwide lockdown so none of the students can go to school. As lockdown started, I've been approached by a number of families who are desperate to have devices for their children to work from home. We've lent out some of the devices from our schools, but we don't have enough to lend to every child who needs them. The head teacher said that they were really in need for devices because a lot of the families do not have computers and the children have to use their parents' phones to do assignments. So I'm so grateful that I was able to approach the Suchi Foundation and ask if you were able to help. And we are thrilled that you have been so generous and you've donated 15 Chromebooks to give out to our children. We hope that even during the pandemic, the children can still continue their education without pause, relieving the worries of not only students and parents, but also teachers, so that they can teach with peace of mind. In Quenshan, China, 52-year-old Huang Guozhen is a CDK recipient whose adoptive father passed away due to illness. Volunteers help him with his father's funeral, with one particular volunteer helping him acquire a cemetery plot. Following Zhiji volunteers into this Kunshan funeral home, 52-year-old Huang Guozhen carries the ashes of his adoptive father. Because he was worried about the long-term burial problem, he was finally able to solve it this day. Because Huang Guozhen has problems with his hands and feet, and his mom is sad with such a heavy heart, I said I would go and talk to my sister. Then she said yes, so the compassion of my sister helped give the cemetery plot to put people at ease and help his father go into the ground as soon as possible. Wang Guozhen was born in Jiangxi. His adoptive parents were his uncles and aunts because he lived in Taiwan when he was young, did not have a registered permanent residence in Kunshan. After his adoptive father passed away, it became difficult for him to get a cemetery plot as Zhiji volunteers helped in time. Sister Guofang said that you should tell Huang Guozhen about it. You must give me a small sum of money. After you give me money, ours is an act of buying and selling so he doesn't owe me anything. He just gave a small red envelope and then we gave two cemetery plots to Huang Guozhen's adoptive father and adoptive mother. Since I had a stroke, it's been the brothers and sisters from Zhiji who helped me and supported my medical expenses. Otherwise, it would be difficult for me to continue living without such support. When my father died, it was also a Zhiji brother who helped me find a cemetery, as I am very grateful to Zhiji. Volunteers accompany Huang Guozhen and his adoptive mother to satisfactory handle the affairs of his adoptive father. In this moment, this family has become closer than true relatives as the kindness of strangers helps the love remain forever. Today we examine the coast of Taiwan from the perspective of director Qi Boarding, a famous high-altitude filmmaker. We we'll examine the Datan Elgar Reef in Taoyuan. Here's more. Taiwan is an island imprisoned by cement with wave-breaking blocks, highways and ports which take up most of the coastline. When director Qi was shooting this photo, he found that there's a pink algae reef near Taoyuan Dan. The algae reef can coexist with the sandy coast. It is quite rare in the world. 
Before dawn, we came to the Datan Natural Gas Power Plant, Guantang Kaoyuan. We are going to climb down a sand dune and go to see Daitan Algae Reef. It is said that Daitan Algae Reef has a history of 7,000 years, so it has existed in the Neolithic age. Struggling to climb the dunes formed in the silt-filled wow. sand, the horizon that comes into view is all engineering construction. My current location is at the backflow of the Datan power plant. In addition to the wind turbines, there is a dig adjacent to the sea, which forms the so-called jetty effect. This is a famous landscape suit by director Qi Boling. The coastline in front of the sand dunes is covered by fine coffee-colored sand, and it is a reef made of overlapping corals and algae. Coral reefs are made from marine animals. They are their bones. They are like our bones. They are very hard bones. Algae are made in layers. The crackling sound under the feet is distressing because the pink algal reef only grows one centimeter every 10 years, which is 10 times slower than coral reef building. The preciousness of ecology can be underestimated. As early as 2015, Taoyuan's environmental protection groups applied to the government to list this area as a nature reserve. There has been no progress so far. Taoyuan algal reefs are distributed over a total of 27 kilometers, from Zhuwei fishing port to Yong'an fishing port. The most essential and richest ecology is Datan algal reef. Currently, a natural gas receiving station is to be built at this current location. Because Taoyuan is an industrial area, the coastline is intensively developed and pollution incidents are frequent. Many people think that this coastline has long been destroyed. The domestic academic community first identified and confirmed that there are natural algal reefs which are rare in the world at the Datan Natural Gas Power Plant. As long as the tide is low, you can see the 200-meter wide reef. This landscape is only visible in Taiwan. The feeling today is not as good as last year to see, as if it has been disturbed by project here. But we can still see the shell-shaped coral algae here. The purple-red color you see it still has a high coverage on the surface. Then you can imagine that if the coverage is comprehensive, then the whole is a purplish red coast. Pan Zhongzhen, who is a grandfather, speaks very lovingly about this subject. He has devoted himself to the social movement to defend the algal reef for more than 10 years, because saving algal reefs is actually saving mankind. These biological reefs are actually absorbing calcium in the sea, turn them into calcium carbonate, then storing it. It is not released into the air, so it's a carbon sequestration hero and an important medium to stop climate change. The pink reef in the sea looks like a rose-colored stone and is very beautiful. And this morning, there was a surprise. We are very happy because there is a star species here. This is the only animal in the world that is found in Daitan Algae Reef. It is a first-class conservation animal, Polycyanthus chysanesis coral. We have found an entire group of three meters. In 2012, Polyxanthinus chysanthinus coral became a new species in Taiwan officially. It was announced as a first level endangered species by the Forest Bureau on May 1, 2017. There are precious algal reefs and corals which make up algal reefs selected as a first hotspot in East Asia by the International Marine Conservation Organization Mission Blue in 2019. I think the biggest threat to it now is the pollution. The second is the natural gas receiving station, because the pier is built just outside the algal reef. It is very likely that the station will occur here. Long-term siltation may cover high algal reef, and its life may be affected. The current proposal by environmental groups is for the natural gas receiving station to be relocated. I think it's worth all of us to work together to help form a real consensus for all the people. The aerial shots by Chi Boilin let people know that Taiwan has such a precious algal reef and inspires people to defend and protect the environment. Hualien Ziji Medical Center has the most well-equipped medical laboratory in eastern Taiwan. However, with the development of science and technology, the Department of Laboratory Medicine has spent eight months to upgrade its system. <laughs> The Intelligence Medical Examination is officially launched in the Department of Laboratory Medicine of Huan and Suzy Medical Center. An average of more than 2,500 blood, urine, and biochemical samples will be processed per day. 
and more than seven kinds of physiological indices can be detected in each sample. The delivery of the samples is shortened by four automatic checks. The classification is clear. The blood drawing for children and elderly are all separated, and also both the numbers and names are displayed, so it won't be misleading. The first outpatient toilet in the East Building is connected to the urine delivery tract to improve safety. There's an automated track in the toilet, so people only need to urinate in the toilet bowl and the urine sample will be sent directly to our laboratory to make it more convenient for the public. Using new detection equipment can improve stability and efficiency, and can also handle a large number of samples simultaneously. I think it's quite meaningful to be able to guard it for everyone. When a doctor wants to diagnose some diseases, he needs to check on us first, so we have to produce a correct and quick report. Through automation, medical personnel can face the unknown disease conditions carefully, while they can also safeguard people's health as promised. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected the world, reminding us of the importance of caring for the earth and being vegetarian. Taipei City Hospital also designed vegetarian bookmarks for the public. This painting is cute and young people like it better. Through easy to understand test and lively illustrations, the benefits of eating vegetarian food are promoted to young people, also provide nutrition and recipes for the public. I actually don't know how to make vegetarian dishes. I think sharing some recipes on the APP is very good. You see, we all wear masks because of the pandemic. We have to pray together and be vegetarian. We should expand from two days a month to being vegetarian every day. Physicians also use bookmarks to promote the concept of the vegetarianism and the various benefits of being vegetarian. It can reduce the risk of cancers, cerebrovascular diseases and cardiovascular diseases protect the kidneys and even blood diseases. They have strong evidence vegetarian food is a good recipe for human health. There is also a QR code here so the public can refer to it. Physicians also recommend eating vegetarian food as soon as possible for the patients with a good cardiovascular disease control. In addition to continuing to take this medicine, you should also try to eat vegetarian food because vegetarian food has no cholesterol. It can reduce the risk of heart disease by 40 percent. In addition to caring for life, being vegetarian also benefits health. By sharing bookmarks, more people could be attracted to becoming a vegetarian. In New Taipei City, city volunteer Xu Huang Yuying has been selling rice noodle soup in Banqiao. However, in order to promote vegetarianism, she and her son-in-law began to sell vegetarian food on the eighth day of the Lunar New Year. This old-fashioned rice noodle shop is a delicacy that everyone in Banqiao knows. Now they are going to sell vegetarian food. <laughs> The restaurant owner, Xu Huang Yuying, started to sell porridge at the age of 28. It has been 44 years. She is doing business while doing ziji. The business is good, but there is always something she wanted to change. I've always wanted to transform and I don't know where to start. It wasn't until this year when I turned on the TV and saw that the master kept saying that it must be vegetarian. I felt that it's okay to transform. We did everything we want, so I'm very satisfied. Her son-in-law, who has worked in a vegetarian restaurant for more than 20 years, is her most powerful support for her determination. Simple is good. It needs to be made very delicious and low-priced. There's no need to add processed ingredients, only using natural ingredients. On the eighth day of Lunar New Year, the vegetarian noodle store officially opened, and regular customers come. We decided to do such a blessed thing, of course. We have to grab the first chance. We plan to eat more, because the boss said that the first income she makes will be donated. <laughs> The meat treated with retopamine is not good for us, so I just give a try to be a vegetarian. 
The noodle store is still very popular, and the taste is still familiar and delicious. And there is a little more love of animals. In the United States, February is the season for filing taxes. City Almonte Service Center in California started accepting tax documents from residents by drive-thru. Here at Siji El Monte Service Center, with just a simple desk and several chairs set up in front of the door, as well as adequate safety measures, Siji volunteers start receiving tax filing documents via drive through This year, we used different methods to accept documents. If the taxpayer is able to access the internet and upload their information, we help them remotely. However, for the people who are not familiar with these electronic devices, especially low-income families and senior residents, they can drive over and drop off their documents here. We used to go to senior citizens, but because of the pandemic, we were they're closed and they won't help us. So then that's how we ended up coming to this foundation to help us. We provide free service. It is our duty to help them file taxes so as to minimize their unnecessary worries. Lu Jia Li, who is an accountant, comes every year to help with tax filing and persists in volunteering despite the pandemic. I've been volunteering here for seven years. When other volunteers see me, they will ask me, oh, have you come again this year? They're all very warm and friendly. It feels like old friends reuniting, so I'm happy to come here. No matter by cloud upload, drive through drop-off, or telephone services, Siji volunteers in El Monte continue to provide safe and convenient service in their community. In Tainan, Guiyuan District, cleaning members found some gold ornaments when they disassembled a spring mattress. City recycling volunteers have also found gold nuggets inside discarded electric fan. People are reminded to keep their valuables in a proper place in order to prevent loss. After lifting the cotton cloth and pulling out of the spring steel ring, the cleaning member found a plastic bag while disassembling the spring mattress. I found a plastic bag. There was a little box with some gold ornaments inside. There were also guarantee letters for the gold ornaments. Apart from gold ornaments, some Asian coins of the Japanese colonial era were also found inside the spring matches. After unscrewing, a Tuzi recycling frontier at a recycling station also found a gold nugget at the bottom of an electric fan. This was hidden here. He just hid the gold nugget here. There was an electric fan that was very heavy, as if there was a stone inside. We wonder who keep a stone inside electric fan. It's really a pity to throw it away. Especially during Lunar New Year, many people do home cleaning. A lot of cash or gold jewelry is thrown out as garbage. There was a box among the plastic. Some sisters over there thought it was weird, so they took it out to have a look. If some cash is found, volunteers would keep it in the recycling station first and wait for the lost property to be found. People are reminded to keep the valuables carefully and properly. The Hualien County government has set up Indigenous People's Vegetable School, displaying the seeds of beans and vegetables consumed by the Indigenous people. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.